Thanks for watching this video prepared by ANE Migration Services and Consulting. Please like and share this video and subscribe to our channel. Because at least 10 hours of work have been put into the preparation for this video and presenting in a way that many visa applicants can understand easily and visually. Let us be part of your journey in Australia and support you throughout this journey. This video gives you a detailed overview of the application requirements and eligibility criteria in applying for your second or subsequent 485 temporary graduate visa in the post-study work stream as a primary visa applicant only from the 23rd of March 2024. Please note. This flowchart is not about your application for your first subclass 485 temporary graduate visa in the post-study work stream or in the replacement stream. The content in this video is prepared for reference and discussion only. Please seek professional advice about the content in this video. All references to the relevant legislations are stated in the blue and purple areas on the left-hand side. The red lines in this flowchart are an answer no to the question in a decision step. By following this flowchart, you will have an overview of what is required of you to apply for this visa and ascertain whether you will be able to satisfy the eligibility criteria. Let's start. There are two steps to apply for this visa. The first step is to submit a valid visa application. If your application is not valid, your application will not be successful even if you meet all visa eligibility criteria. For any visa applications, Always check whether there are any visa conditions, act-based or regulation-based restrictions that will stop you from applying for the visa. There may not be any such restriction. Or the restrictions may not apply to you. However, it is the awareness of any relevant restriction which is important. As this is your second or subsequent application for a subclass 485 temporary graduate visa in the post-study work stream. You need to check which cohort you belong to. Put simply, there are two cohorts. Applicants in cohort 2A are entitled to nil visa application charge for the visa application. Other eligible applicants not in cohort 2A are in cohort 2B. In order to apply for the visa with nil visa application charge in cohort 2A, you need to hold a subclass 485 post-study work stream visa or replacement stream visa. You are seeking to apply for an extension of your 485 visa with nil visa application charge. You must hold a specified qualification. At the end of this video, we have provided a link with all specified qualifications. You have not been previously granted a subclass 485 visa with nil visa application charge or granted a subclass 485 visa in the post-study work stream with additional visa period because you held a specified qualification. You must not hold a Hong Kong passport or British National Overseas Passport. If you meet the above-mentioned criteria, you are in cohort 2A. If you do not meet all the above-mentioned criteria except that, you are a current holder of a subclass 485 visa in the post-study work stream or replacement stream, and that you are applying for your second or subsequent subclass 485 visa in the post-study work stream. You are in cohort 2B. Unless in you are in cohort 2A. You must be under 50 years of age at the time of application. You must apply for this visa on shore. That is, you must apply for this visa in Australia. You must nominate only one stream, the post-study work stream. There is a limit as to how many subclasses 485 visas that you can extend. The grant of this visa in your current visa application will not result in you. Holding more than four subclass 485 visas including the one in the current visa application. Holding more than one subclass 485 replacement stream visa. Holding more than one subclass 485 post study stream visa with nil visa application charge. Holding more than one subclass 485 post study stream visa meeting the same eligibility criteria.
please refer to the last part of this flow chart where you can see a visa applicant must meet one of the six eligibility criteria. There are very limited circumstances in which you can submit a paper application form. If you are authorized to submit a paper application form, please ensure that you follow strictly the required submission requirements from the department. Most of the applicants will need to use Form 1276 as an internet application. The visa application charge is $745 for applicants in Cohort 2B as of the 1st of March 2024. Applicants in Cohort 2A are not liable to pay any visa application charge. If you have submitted a valid application, the department will process your visa application, assessing whether you meet all visa eligibility criteria. The second step is to check whether you meet all visa eligibility criteria. If you have held some specified visas, you will not be eligible to apply for your second or subsequent subclass 485 temporary graduate visa in the post-study work stream. The specified visas are Subclass 476 Skilled Recognized Graduate Visa Subclass 485 Temporary Graduate Visa in the Graduate Work Stream At the time of application and decision, you had adequate arrangement for health insurance. There are various public interest criteria and special return criteria that you have to meet. In particular the character and health requirements. Any accompanying family members included in your visa applications also need to meet certain public interest criteria and special return criteria. These criteria are called one fails all fail criteria. This means that if any accompanying family members do not meet those public interest criteria and special return criteria, you will not be successful in your visa application. As of the 23rd of March 2024, there is no limit on the number of subclass 485 visas that can be granted. Whether you are eligible to apply for your second or subsequent subclass 485 temporary graduate visa in the post-study work stream will depend on whether you held or previously held a subclass 485 visa in the post-study work stream that was granted based on study you have undertaken in some specified parts in Australia. You must have undertaken your study and at an educational institution in a regional centre, other regional area or designated regional area. At the end of this video, we have provided a link to a legislative instrument detailing the specified parts of Australia which are classified as regional centres, other regional areas or designated regional areas. You declare in the application form that you and any accompanying family members intend to live only in the specified areas. If you or accompanying family members also work or study or propose to work or study, work or study only in the specified areas. While you were undertaking the study, you must have only lived in the area. For a period of at least two years before visa application, you must have only lived in the specified areas. If you also worked or studied, you have worked or studied only for a period of at least two years in the specified areas before application. At the time of decision of your visa application, you live only in the specified areas. If you also work or study at that time, you work or study only in the specified areas. Based on which cohort you belong to. What visa you held at time of application. And which areas where you have undertaken your study and lived including work or further studies where applicable, and your resident status at time of decision. You shall be able to determine which visa eligibility criterion you are seeking to satisfy and whether you are entitled to nil visa application charge in this visa application. Thanks for watching this video. Remember, please like and share this video and subscribe to our channel so that we can provide more content to support you.